This is the second video in the series on making a JSON web service, and this is actually creating the service. Uh, our goal is to make something that looks like this, where we can invoke a web service, and we can say uh, oak, perhaps, and it will give us a list of oak trees, or we can say maple, and get back a list of maple trees, and so on and so forth. So uh, we can use that in our Android app so that we can say something like magnolia, and as we start typing, Magnolia, as we start typing, it will give us a list of suggestions and it will allow us to do an autocomplete. The nice thing about autocomplete in Android is that it keeps us on one screen. It keeps us from having to navigate to too many screens. So that's our ultimate goal. In this video, what we're going to do is we are going to create a table using PHP MyAdmin. In this case, we're going to use UC file space, which provides a uh, PHP MyAdmin interface. So I've come here, I select uh, my database, Jones BR, and it says no tables found in database. So I'm going to make one, and I'll make it look like the plants table we put together in a previous entity relationship diagram. So I'm going to say plants. Number of fields? Yeah, we'll start with about 10. That should be adequate for now. And then I'm going to choose go. So choose go, sit back and relax. And now it's going to give me an opportunity to pick what I want each of these fields to be. The first column, we're typically going to want to be an automatically generated primary key. So I might call this one ID, or we could call it plant ID. Um, those are all fine. I'm going to scroll to the right. Attributes, uh, that's fine. Index, primary, uh, whoops, sorry, primary, and then AI for auto increment. Um, I think we're good, aside from that. Now, this we're going to want to make a, um, an int would be fine for that. Let's so make that an int. After that, we want to use the classification names uh, that we use to define a plant. So I'm going to say common, underscore name, we could do this in all caps, or we could do it uh, kind of in a Pascal case. Uh, typically, we'll see column names in all caps. That's uh, fielder's, fielder's choice. So uh, this one, we could say a limit of 255. That should be adequate for a common name. Everything else should be good here. No index uh, on that one yet. Uh, then we can say genus, and we'll make that also varcar255. Uh, actually, let's start with family. We'll keep it in the proper... Uh, order for uh, the Linnaeus category, categorization. Genus, okay, 255 is plenty for that. That's plenty high. It doesn't mean it's allocating that much space. It just means that we can't store more than that many characters in this field. Family genus species, uh, 255 again is plenty. Cultivar, uh, 255 is plenty for that as well. Uh, now we can start doing other things like uh, notes. Notes we might not we might want some more um, we might want some additional data something like a long blob or something like that uh, where we can enter more data um, or we can just set it to text several options that we have here uh, I'm gonna ch I don't make it long text we'll leave it like so okay uh, and then we can say size minimum so what's the minimum size size min uh, we're going to want this to be probably an int. Um, yeah, we'll keep that as an int. And then maybe we'll say size max. And we can make that an int as well. And, um, okay, uh, anything else we want to do? I can maybe, I, I usually like to make something called approved or a date purged or something like that. We'll make one called purge date. And that's so I can do kind of like a soft delete. I can turn something off without actually deleting it from the database. So make that a date. And so if there's a date in there, we're not going to show this in our results. So I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to choose Save. Okay, Table Jones BR, which is my Bearcat ID, Plants has been created. This now gives me something that I can program against. So probably want to put some data in there to get things started just to test things out. But this at, le at least gives me something that I can program against. So we created the database and the next step we're going to create a simple Perl script that will read from this database and generate some JSON. We'll see you then.